And the Tories are saying half of all MPs will be women. They're hoping. What do you think well, about half this? Of the candidates, at least, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, party gate has turned into porn gate. I mean, could it have got any worse than Boris Johnson? Mm. Don't know. Probably could have done, actually. Um, considering that, wasn't there an inquiry done into the House of Commons computers that found actually a, a large swathe of them had pornographic images on? This was a couple of years ago. So, anyway, back to yes. this... To I be, sort of think if they did that in any <clears> office... I think they would too, actually. I think yeah. they would too. I suppose, yeah, so what they're saying is that, yeah, Oliver Dowden's saying, oh, well, um, the Tory party doesn't reflect the makeup of Britain. We only have a quarter of our MPs that are female. It should be half. With Labour, it's more than half of all MPs are actually female. So, you know, why has it taken so much for them to catch up? The problem with that is that he's effectively saying that he needs women to be the moral arbiters of the men in the Tory party, you know? Well, it sounds like it, because if he thinks that just by virtue of having women, people's behaviour will improve. I mean, that's a very Victorian idea that we need women around us to behave better. Mm. I thought it was, result. but can't be arguing it's all about equality? Well, he is, but he's trying to give people reassurance that if there are more women around, then things will be better for women. I, I think it's total inequality. I think this is positive discrimination of the very worst kind. Because what this suggests, and I'm a male, OK, I'm a male gentleman of a certain age, uh, half of our MPs will be women. Does that mean that men can't be trusted now in Parliament? Therefore, we've got to reduce their numbers. I mean, the behaviour of this man who's now resigned, uh, the Tiverton guy, what's his name, Neil Parrish, it was absolutely disgusting. But I've never watched <laughs> pornography on a, on, on a machine or anywhere else. I have never, you know, in a, in, a, in a working career within the media, in busy offices and newsrooms and studios, I've never had a problem with misogyny from myself or anybody else. And I think the idea now that, well, the only way you can balance up a workplace is to make sure there's 50% <clears throat> men and 50% women. I'm sorry, you, you give people jobs on the merit of their ability mm. to but, do the job. But, Mike, don't you think it's peculiar that the Labour that Labour Party has more than half of its MPs women and the Tory party only has a quarter. Don't you think that's, you know, that's peculiar and we should unpack that? Uh, uh, Especially uh, when women are making up half the population. Why aren't they half the workforce? I'll I tell you what strikes me with that, mm. and it's only because I was thinking about it the other day, mm. and you think, oh, well, there was a big intake of, of, of female mm. Labour MPs Under Tony in Blair. 1997. Blair's babes, yeah. Well, Blair's babes? Yes. If that's not mm. a misogynistic term, what is? Well, exactly. we don't use that anymore, but the, the, the idea behind it was that it was unequal and we needed to encourage more women into Parliament. Mm. I mean, at, at the minute, uh, MP Stella Creasy is making the point that she she wants mums in Parliament because there are too many working mums that don't have access to childcare that have got amazing skills and can be, can make fantastic <coughs> yeah. MPs. So what we need to do is take away some of the barriers that stop women from entering yeah. politics. And but what you know what the story is really about is that there is a culture of blokishness in Parliament. Mm. I've been to loads of meetings there. I've worked there loads of times. It is extremely male feeling when yeah. you go in there, yeah. and it needs to be more <laughs> welcoming to women. But, but then should the selection process be more rigorous for those who are chosen to represent their constituencies? I agree with everything you've said. There is a blokish attitude to yeah. the Commons. I go there occasionally still, and you can still feel it in yeah, the air yeah. and all that. But what I'm saying is they've got to be educated at constituency level to appoint people, man or women, to go up there and act like normal human beings, not take any prejudices. I with suppose them. there'd be an argument to say, wouldn't there, Mike, that if, if the Commons was... Um, more open to women in terms of yes. things like childcare like child and all yes. then more women would put, more women who would be good candidates yeah. would yeah. put themselves That's, forward. I, I totally agree, and also women enter politics later because they've established their family situation, and then they feel able when their children are, are young to get in. Men can start getting ready to get into politics, you know, in local politics or working as a special advisor in in, mm. in uh, Westminster from the age of about 21 when they leave university. So they've got an already standing start, if you see what I mean, on getting into Parliament. So that should be addressed. I totally yeah, agree with that. absolutely. Uh, you know, the opportunity to get into Parliament should be addressed, but not on the character of the individual to say, just because you're a woman, we're going to give you favourable treatment. That, but that's, not, but that's not what Oliver Dowding is saying at all. It's not well, going to say that we're going to prefer to be, yeah. women candidates. He says, he says we need to encourage more women candidates yeah. and shift the numbers. Because there would be, that's yeah, very there, different. There'd be a problem for a women-only shortlist, which is what the Labour yeah, Party totally, exactly. which the Labour Party has done, and exactly. he's not suggesting that at all. So I think yeah. it's perfectly, I think it's perfectly reasonable what he's saying. But I don't like the idea that he thinks by virtue of having more women around, behaviour will change.